Uh, what's the difference between ATCA and open compute? And the second question is how the Facebook, if open graph protocol, one day there is any relationship with software defined network? Hmm. Um, so actually I can't speak to the, the nuance between ATCA and, and open compute. Uh, I think ATCA is more of a standards, uh, standard in the way of designing motherboards, if I'm not mistaken. Okay, thank you. Um, so I mean, o open compute is uh, really sort of they're the designs that were inspired by Facebook as being very slimmed down, very focused on scale out operators and people who are designing servers for uh, um, you know sort of extremely low cost and to operate in a data center rather than having to be a general purpose compute node that may be used in a rack in one place and a cabinet in another place uh, or even on a standalone basis. It's really designed as an entire system, if you will, of, of standards. Your second question was around uh, the potential maybe for open, the open, Facebook open graph and software-defined networking to be combined over time. I, you know, sure, potentially. You know, I think the open graph protocol uh, is, is really that. It's, um, it's a graph protocol that allows you to um, not only access but walk social relationships between people and between objects in the graph. Uh, I think there's actually a lot of commonality and a lot of relationships to how networks work, whether it's via a centralized controller or as a distributed you know, uh, a, a system, a la a routing algorithm or something like that. Um, but I think uh, our, one of the things I know we thought a lot about was being able to, for example, just couple our application to the network. And so depending on the call type that was being made, uh, whether it was via OG, Open Graph, uh, or any one of our other number of systems, was to be able to couple them directly to that not just the path, but perhaps uh, traffic priority or queuing or those sorts of things. Yeah. Um, <clears throat> I I, I um, wanted to ask if you uh, you know if you put on your um, bell hat again today, you know, like you were in Frontier several years ago, and the debate between ATM and IP. So today, uh, if I draw an analogy, it may not be a perfect analogy, but uh, just trying to make a simple one, uh, you know. Uh, carriers today have uh, um, switches and routers uh, from companies like Juniper, Cisco, Brocade, et cetera. And a lot of them are offering future solutions that have, you know, that have some aspects of open flow but are yet very proprietary, right? So Juniper is offering something like Q Fabric, Cisco's announced Fabric Path, and we can go down the list. And then you have open flow with you know, merchant silicon and so forth. Do you see similar debates today in the, in the telco community or do you think it's years away before those types of the debates occur in terms of when to transition? Uh, how would you relate the timing of that? Yeah, it's an, it's an interesting question. I, I personally don't think it's right around the corner. Um, you know, I think it's probably 18 to 24 months at a minimum uh, away. Um, but the interesting thing is I think the slope of the curve is going to be much, much steeper than it was when we transitioned from ATM frame relay X25, arguably, into IP, which is a very long transition. Um, and I think the, the, the nature, the motivating forces that are at play there are not only competition, but will be new services. And there'll be revenue opportunities for the carriers, for the, the, those network operators. And will also be uh, just, you know, if, if I, I think the other thing I think about is NNI interfaces to customers. And then customers wanting to be able to uh, maybe deploy services within sort of multiple sites or across multiple sites of their enterprise using a carrier in the middle. Uh, and so I think that will be, uh, a, as I said, sort of a much more rapid curve of adoption. But I think it's, it's still a little ways away from, from where we are today. Hi, uh, Steve Georges from Line Rate Systems. Hey, Jonathan, I'm curious to know if, do you see any intersection between software defined networking and uh, the DevOps movement? Do you imagine a time when you'd actually allow developers uh, to be able to innovate on the network? Uh, absolutely. So, um, you know, I think I, I think all of these things play off of each other, if you if you will. And by virtue of giving a developer not only more control but better abstractions, I think y you can end up building much more interesting and robust software much more rapidly. And one of the things that I think has has allowed Facebook to grow as as well as it has from a, at least from an infrastructure standpoint was exactly that, that technique. And being able to break down uh, what would normally be sort of vertical applications into uh, simple components that could easily be sort of just like Lego bricks, 
uh, reconfigured and re-glued together uh, depending on what the application developer needed, needed to be able to do. Uh, and, and you know, I think looking ahead, maybe it's a year or two or something in that, in that time frame, you know, I think one of the things that would be super interesting is to give that application developer that today is just you know, sort of calling an object at, you know, from, a, from a database or out of cache uh, and, and be able to give them full control over the network as well. Cool, thanks. Cool, well, thank you. Any, Hopefully that was interesting. Okay, thank you, Dennis. <laughs>